China has been spending millions to get U.S. media to print communist propaganda. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Our precious media. The fourth estate. Where would we be without the trusted mainstream media? We'd probably be watching some jerk on YouTube. This will probably come as no surprise to you, unless this is your first time watching this jerk on YouTube. But the Chinese Communist Party has been giving millions of dollars to U.S. newspapers. Yes, an openly hostile authoritarian regime has been paying American media to publish propaganda. And they took the money. In the past four years, the Chinese government has paid a total of $19 million to major media, including the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the Wall Street Journal. I mean, democracy dies in darkness, so you gotta pay the electricity bills somehow. China Daily, which is owned by the propaganda department of the Chinese Communist Party, has been paying these American newspapers to run China Watch. Now, it may look like a newspaper section, but it's actually a paid advertisement. It's just designed to look like a newspaper article. So you accidentally confuse Chinese propaganda with mainstream media reporting. China Daily has to disclose its activities semi-annually under the Foreign Agents Registration Act. But a recent amended filing was the first to give a full breakdown of who they paid and how much. It's almost as if they wanted this story to come out and blow up any respect the American public had left for our media. But the real question is, did money from China affect how these media reported on China? Well, that'd be hard to prove. Certainly, there have been plenty of cases of Western media either knowingly or unknowingly doing reporting that would please the Chinese Communist Party. Did Chinese money influence foreign policy to write articles criticizing Trump's phone call with the president of Taiwan? Did the millions paid to the Washington Post result in critical reporting of the trade war? Or did the $50,000 the New York Times got lead them to publish opinion pieces like this? Or this? Or this? Okay, probably not because $50,000 isn't a lot to a company that got $531 million in advertising revenue last year. And Western media pride themselves on the idea that advertising doesn't affect their editorial decisions. So maybe it's not the money. Maybe it's the fact they all wanted the Communist Party to allow them to have reporters stationed in China. Well, the joke's on them. Bye-bye, Beijing Bureau. But even more worrying than the stories these media report are the stories that they won't report. They might bury stories because of external pressure from Chinese officials or internal pressure over losing business in China, like how Bloomberg News silenced its own journalists for reporting on China corruption. So on one hand, the Chinese Communist Party is directly or indirectly censoring news about China, while on the other hand, they're paying Western media millions of dollars to spread the party's propaganda. And it's not limited to China Daily or U.S. media either. Apparently, now The Economist is taking money from state-run Xinhua News Agency. So, where can you turn for accurate news on China from someone who will never, ever get paid by the Chinese Communist Party? This jerk on YouTube. Unfortunately, China Uncensored is on a platform that has censored insults to the Chinese Communist Party and demonetizes videos about sensitive topics like the anti-CCP protests in Hong Kong. That's why this show is mostly funded by viewers like you, who contribute to us through the crowdfunding website Patreon. I call our supporters the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. As a thank you to them, I answer their questions at the end of the show. Today's question comes from Straven, can the WHO continue to operate as usual despite America pulling out alongside our massive funding support? Ah, the World Health Organization. Another supposedly independent body we were supposed to be able to rely on, but sold out to the Chinese Communist Party instead. Now, that's a very good question. The U.S. was the largest single contributor to the WHO, about $450 million a year. 
until Trump announced at the end of May that the U.S. would stop funding them. Because they have failed to make the requested and greatly needed reforms, we will be today terminating our relationship with the World Health Organization. China, on the other hand, contributes only about $40 million per year. But if you're a fan of the WHO, don't worry, they'll survive. Their biggest funder now is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In fact, the Gates Foundation has upped their contribution, bringing the total to more than $250 million per year. But that's still nowhere near replacing the $450 million the U.S. gave. Does that mean the WHO will now be chronically underfunded and we'll all be less safe? Probably not. The WHO is plagued with corruption. For more on that, check out our episode, Coronavirus, how WHO corruption helped it spread. Even the division that handled emergencies like the coronavirus was chronically underfunded, while the WHO racked up huge travel costs, including first-class airfare and five-star hotels for WHO officials. So if operating as usual means waste and corruption, then I hope the WHO won't be able to operate as usual now that the U.S. is pulling funding. And redirecting it to other health-related causes. But really, the World Health Organization is just one manifestation of the incredible power China holds over the entire United Nations. Rooting out the rest of China's corrupting influence will be a much bigger task. Thanks for your question. And thank you for watching. Be sure you're still subscribed because YouTube keeps secretly unsubscribing people. The joys of being truly independent from the Chinese Communist Party. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.